the yolk but it just rolls around and there's no air space so this egg is definitely a dud definitely not fertile okay now let's check this one this egg you can definitely tell it's half full see that little air space so that's a good egg that's developing into something yay Okay, I'm gonna check the rest of these eggs quickly so I can get them under Jemima. I'll let you know what the count is. All right, you guys. I had a lot of eggs that were fertile ended up. I had 10 eggs that I think there's a possibility of hatching. I wrote some question marks on some with a pencil because I wasn't quite sure, but that's really good. And then, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that were definitely duds. So that's awesome. Let's get these back under Jemima. We'll be expecting a nice little clutch of babies. Okay. Here you go, Jemima. never been so thankful for the city noises before um, our city has been very quiet the last couple weeks and today our state is finally opening up and there's a lot a lot more city noises that I guess I just took for granted <laughs> yeah glad to see things getting back to normal we had our last little cold spell probably of the spring Last little cool spell, I should say. From now on, here in Dallas, Texas, it's just gonna start ramping up with the heat. So it's time to get those cool season veggies out of the garden, totally out harvested, and put those warm season ones in. I'm gonna harvest this kale while it's still beautiful and yummy. I've learned my lesson about trying to carry things over a little further into the season. They just start looking poorly, they taste bitter, and they're attacked by pests. So let's get them out of here. All right, they're in a pail of cool water and right into the fridge they go. Unfortunately, the Brussels never sprouted. This is the best one. Those are the biggest. And the others are about the size of a pea. <laughs> but fortunately I found out that you can eat the leaves. So I'm gonna gather these leaves and the little sprouts. And then we have some things waiting to seed, like this butter crunch lettuce and this beautiful red lettuce and purple carrots. These are gonna stay in the bed for a little bit longer until I get seed from them. It's time to turn these cabbages into sauerkraut. Join me. The first step was to remove the outer leaves of the cabbage and wash it up really good. Of course, cut off the end and then cut it in half. And cut it in quarters <laughs> and then I removed the core and then sliced it up really nice you can use the food processor too if you want to cut it up nice and thin 
I also did purple cabbage, so that gave it a really pretty look. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Now next, I weighed my cabbage. Now this is the best way to make sure that you don't have too much salt in your cabbage. So first, I subtracted the weight of the bowl, of course, and then put the cabbage in and weighed it in grams. And once you have that figure, then what you do is multiply by 0 0.02 so that you can get the weight of the salt you need. So you're making a 2% salt solution for the sauerkraut. Sprinkle the salt in and then mix. Now you also want to pound your cabbage or bruise your cabbage to release all those good liquid juices. So I wish I had bought in the fermenting kit there was a pounder, a wooden pounder, I don't know what they're called, but I found something that would work. <laughs> you can see it really breaking down and the juice is coming out. And then I added caraway to my cabbage just for a little bit of flavor and then bottled it up. It took about a half an hour of pounding, so yeah, to release all those juices and get your garden workout, your fermenting workout. Okay, and then press it down in the jar really well so it's all packed down and that liquid comes up on top. Now, I didn't have quite enough liquid, so I just put in a little bit of spring water just to cover the top. And then I'm using something that I used for the first time this year called a pickle pebble. And that just keeps the cabbage under the liquid brine. So no yucky mold or anything will happen. And then I also use the pickle pipe, which lets out the gases from the ferment, but doesn't let any oxygen in. So it also keeps everything all fresh and tasty. I'll leave a link down in the description for these things. I really liked them. So we're doing a little Friday night fermenting right here. I'm fermenting. Yeah. I like the view. Aw, thanks. No. <laughs> I meant the garden. The, the garden. That's a really nice garden. <laughs> I'm going to keep fermenting. <laughs> you know, I'm making, I'm making this batch hot for you. I'm not hot enough for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all good. What's that called? This is sauerkraut. What is it called? <laughs> he knows I have trouble saying that word. It's sauerkraut. Sauerkraut? No, it's not sauerkraut. It's sauerkraut. Sour sauerkraut. <laughs> On Friday night fermenting. The police should be here any minute now. We get wild. <laughs> Y'all still awake? <laughs> I will leave a link in the description. So you can go there and get a detailed recipe and instructions on how to make your own yummy ferment. Happy fermenting. Bye guys.